hi in our series of dental anatomy we discussed about the anatomy of permanent maxillary central incisor the link of that video is given in the description box below now from this video onwards we will be making a gradual shift to the endodontic part of this tooth by discussing the pulp cavity of maxillary central incisor this will be done under four headings pulp cavity mesiodistally labiolingually cervically and at the midroot levels Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Starting mesiodistally, first of all, the pulp cavity, the pulp chamber as well as the pulp canal conforms to the general outline of the tooth as you can see in the figure. Starting with the pulp chamber first of all, the pulp chamber is present right in the center of the tooth, equidistant from the dentinal walls. This is very much broad at the incisal level and then this pulp chamber along with the pulp canal tapers as we move down cervically. Right at the incisal level, we can see these projections of the pulp as pulp horns which are basically the projections of the pulp into the mammalons if they are present. Then incisally to cervically the pulp chamber and then the pulp canal tapers till it reaches the apical foramen. The pulp mesodistally at the apical foramen is present right at the center of the tooth or it is slightly deviated from the center of the tooth. If you talk about the cross section, the cross section of the pulp chamber of this tooth mesodistally is basically a void and if we get into the details of the same, it is a void at the cervical third, a void to round in the middle third and then round in the apical third. Now if we discuss about the pulp cavity of maxillary central incisor labiolingually, then unlike mesiodistally, the pulp chamber labiolingually is narrow as compared to the pulp chamber mesiodistally. Now here incisally, it can be either narrow or it can be obliterated. This obliteration might be slight or it can be even more obliterated because of the deposition of secondary dentin or irritation induced dentin. Then this pulp chamber or the pulp reaches its greatest labiolingual dimension at the cervical area and then it tapers down till the apex of the tooth. The apical foramen is either present at the tip of the root or it is present slightly labial to the tip of the root. Overall, the root canal is conical and centrally located. If we talk about uh, the pulp cavity of this tooth cervically, then when the patient is young, the pulp chamber is roughly triangular in outline with the base of the triangle present at the labial aspect and the borders of this triangle are relatively round. But as the age increases, there is deposition of secondary dentine and this pulp chamber turns into round shape and eventually crescent shape. If you talk about the pulp canal at the midroot level, the shape is almost same as that present cervically but is rounder and small in all dimensions. So this was all about the pulp cavity of maxillary central incisor. Hope the information was helpful for you. The entire content has been taken from Wheeler's Dental Anatomy and Grossman's Book of Endodontics. This information would be helpful to understand the axis opening and hence the endodontic part of this tooth and the other tooth we will be discussing in our coming videos. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload any new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned, stay safe. Thank you for watching.